Hey everybody, welcome back to One Seed, One World. Got one more update on the cotton for you. You would think by this time of the year, I mean tomorrow's Thanksgiving, that uh, cotton would be pretty much done, especially with the weather that we've had here with, um, you know, this past weekend it was around 17 degrees overnight. Uh, we've had some sleet and ice and some snow flurries, but these cotton plants have been kind of hanging on and we're, I think we're kind of down to the last bit of it. Uh, but I still have some fluffy cotton to pick. And so I wanted to do a follow-up to the other parts of this series um, where we were growing the cotton just to kind of show you how much we got off of mainly the six plants. The other two plants, because they were kind of shaded out by sunflowers and whatnot, they didn't really put off much more than a couple of bowls. Uh, but the rest of these have produced quite a bit of cotton and did really very well this year. And I'm been very pleased uh, with the way it came out and how well they have done and I've been pleasantly surprised that they are still giving us cotton and we're still picking cotton and seeding them and uh, now we're getting into the processing phase which that's what we're going to show you today what we're, what we're doing to process our cotton. Um, I haven't done a whole lot of the processing or the seeding. I've, I've seeded a few uh, but we have a friend that comes over that loves seeding the cotton and so she'll come over and hang out with us while we eat dinner or you know the three of us will sit down and watch a movie and she will sit there and, and pick all the seeds out of the cotton. She loves to do it. Uh, so more power to her and I'm, <laughs> I'm thankful that she's coming over to help out with that. Uh, but her and Mitzi have done quite a bit, um, uh, pretty much all of the seed picking. And then we've also done a little bit of carding and spinning into thread. And I will show you kind of what we do for that process in this video. But right now I'm gonna pick uh, some of these fluffy bowls and um, then we'll take you inside and show you the rest of it. Okay, so I got some more cotton pick to add to the pile. This is what the seeds look like when they come out. And you see that there's a lot of lint still on them. And that is normal. Now, if you buy seeds that are done like in a larger facility, they use a process that uses either, it's like hydrochloric acid or sulfuric acid to remove the remaining lint off the seeds, especially if they're gonna use the seeds for feed for uh, livestock, because the livestock doesn't do well when they eat the seeds and try to have their stomachs process all the lint that's stuck to them. But if you're just growing them, uh, growing cotton and saving the seeds to grow plants next year, it's okay that the lint is still on them uh, because the seed will sprout anyway. We have quite the pile of seeds here, as you can see, and uh, we'll be selling some of these if anybody's interested in growing your own and purchasing some seeds from us. So when the cotton, you know, when you first pick your bowls, it, it kind of comes in to be like a, just a big furry mess. And each bowl is going to vary in seeds. It can be, you know, you might only get two or three uh, or in, more likely you're going to get probably a lot more than that. There can be up to, I think, like 30 seeds per bowl. And because the cotton, especially on this upland cotton, <coughs> upland cotton, uh, the seeds can be pretty kind of buried in there, kind of tight. And so you kind of have to pull away. Uh, there are um, a couple of different of homemade cotton gins out there that you can make yourself. There is the roller type, which I don't think will work with these because the seeds are so tight in the fibers. Uh, I think the kind that you need for upland cotton is a saw gin. And I haven't seen too much on how to make one of your own of those. I need to do more research. But if you 
uh, have made one yourself or are familiar with making a homemade uh, saw gin for this type of cotton instead of the roller gin, uh, put a comment below and, and let me know uh, where I can find that information because I'm interested in, in learning that. But you just kind of go through and, and pull and get all the seeds out. You can get your little seeds and add them to your bowl. And then you can add your cotton fluff to the pile to have it ready for carding. And it's a you know tedious process and that's what I was saying outside. I'm glad that Mitzi and our friend have been working quite diligently on this um, several days a week as we get, pick more cotton and bring it in. They've been doing all the seeds out, uh, picking them all out while we're watching TV or something. So, And I just kind of uh, don't do any of it. <laughs> I've only done a few, so uh, I'm glad to have the help with this because the tedious stuff I'm not so great at. You know, I like growing all this stuff, but when it comes down to all the little tedious things, uh, it's not my fave. All right, so once you get yourself <clears throat> some cotton that's all been seeded, then we're going to move on to the carding. Now with the carding and the spinning part, I'm going to have Mitzi show you that. Uh, because she already knows how to do it and uh, I am only very vaguely familiar with doing it appropriately uh, and so instead of me trying to learn how to do it on the video I will have her show you those two process steps so let's go to that next okay so I'm grabbing some of the cotton that has already had the seeds taken out you want to look for little tiny I don't think you can see this but there's a little black piece here those pieces are parts of the seeds and you want to pull them out and get rid of them if you just happen to see them. So I'm grabbing this. It's okay if there's still a little bit of cotton on your card. These are Ashford cards and you just want to load. I use my thumb and just load the card. You're going from, here's the logo. You're going from the handle down to load your card. So you're just using your thumb to push it down and let these little tines grab the cotton and hold on to it. And again, you want to load it pretty thick. I'm not an expert. This is just what I've done with practice and it seems to work out. And I don't always go to the very edge. I kind of leave those open because I don't want it flowing out over the side. So then I take my other card. So this one on my lap, it's handle pointing up. This one in my hand, it's handle pointing down. Okay. So it's, I take the top of the brush and kind of go down and just pull a little bit. That's all that comes off. Then I go up further toward the middle and then down near the bottom. And that's it. And I'm not, I'm not really going into it yet. I do that a little bit later on, but right now I'm just kind of going in a little bit to grab it and then pulling top edge. That's what it looks like, but you're not going to look in between each one. So top edge, middle and then the bottom and you're not pushing down really hard right so top edge give it a little pull middle bottom tilt up pull down pretty gently and this is what it's looking like so when you look at this one you can see where there's where it's thin and then you just work to try to get that all even so I'm going to bottom so top and that just kind of grabbed it at the middle I'm going to smooth it out so you're you're pushing in and you're pulling up and what that does is that kind of if you can see here it fluffs it up a little bit and then you go back and smooth and that pulls it onto this card okay so 
you put it in and you feel them connected together. You pull it up a little bit or, oh, that was too much. Hold on. If that happens, okay, so I did that. I pushed it in, I pulled it up and it pulled out too much cotton here. You still just go over it lightly with the top card. And basically what you're trying to do is just get it even throughout the whole card. So let me finish this one. Not even yet. But the more you do the whole thing. So you're only picking up cotton at certain times. And then you're smoothing the whole thing. And that smooths it out on this card. So let me finish. So the way that I do it, I have chopsticks that I got with a bowl that I bought and these are smooth. They have a finish on them and it makes it, they, it makes them really good for this kind of stuff. So I'm taking the thick end on one chopstick and the thin end of the other, right? You've got this little bit of fluff hanging off the top. That's what we're going to grab. So we're going to put one chopstick underneath. If you can see that, I'm putting it one underneath. And then I'm turning this chopstick the other way. So this is the pointy end of the one underneath. And then I'm doing the chopstick the other direction so that we've got pointy end to thick end of the chopstick. And then I'm using them to grab it. So one underneath, one on top, and then I'm just going to hold the ends and I'm going to roll it. And this probably didn't work because I'm looking at the camera. So hold on. Let's do it one more time. So you just sandwich the cotton in between. You squeeze it and you start rolling it. When you're rolling it, I like to kind of rub the cotton to keep it going onto the chopstick smoothly. And then I just roll them together smooth, roll them together smooth, roll them together and smooth it out. You're going to have an end that's puffy, you know, that's not attached. And just sm smoosh that around a little bit. It doesn't have to adhere perfectly, but once I've got it rolled up, I take the fat end of one of the chopsticks out and then I go to the other end and I take the fat end out. This is a roll log and it's just to have all the fibers going in the same direction and kind of sticking together and this is what I use to spin the cotton with. So here's the spindle that I use. I, I have a spinning wheel. I enjoy a little drop spindle because I can do it when I'm watching television or whatever. So right now there's already some cotton thread on there. You're going to make a little loop. Okay, so I'm holding the end. I use my finger and then I use the spindle to catch that. It's just like a little stitch. I don't know how, I don't know how to describe it. You're just flipping it around so that it makes kind of like a slip knot on there, right? So then you take your roll log, you've got your little bit of string here. It's not supposed to be doing that. You've got your little bit of string, right? So you're going to smooth this, you're going to fluff this out just a little bit, if you can see that. Fluff it out and lay your string on there, the string that you've already spun, right? And then you let this hang and you spin clockwise. Let the gravity do it. Once it's done spinning, you park it. That's what they call it. You just park it, which means you stop it spinning. And then you take a little bit of the roll log and pull it out. You're going to pinch with your left hand if you're right-handed, right? And then you put spin. What that's doing is it's spinning and putting that spin on this string here. Then you park it, you use this hand and you pull a little bit out. And it's kind of a feel for it, like how much 
cut and you pull out, but you're just drafting it. So you're taking a little and then you're letting that spin. I give it a little extra spin with these fingers when I'm doing it. And actually this isn't even smooth. So I've added some more spin and it's just about adding spin to the thread. And then I park it and then I let a little bit out, let a little bit out, let a little bit out. And you just wanna keep the amount that you're pulling into your yarn you following me here? You wanna to try to keep it even. So this isn't perfect. It's just a piece of string that we're making out of cotton, but it's string that you've made out of something that you've grown in your garden. And then you just keep going and you keep doing that. But it's a great thing to do while you're watching television or whatever. But again, we'll have a whole video on spinning. Okay, so that was a quick basic overview on the last part of our cotton growing and processing. Uh, as Mitzi mentioned, we will do a more in-depth video on spinning uh, and, and spinning it into thread, but I wanted to give you guys a kind of a basic idea on if you grow cotton yourself, you know, what you can kind of do with it to make it into thread. And then once you've got your, you know, your thread ball, um, this here is still on the spindle and connected, but you know, once you get yourself a ball of thread, then you can make clothes and blankets and whatever else you need, you know? It's another thing that you can do with self-sustainability. You know, sometimes think, think outside the box. A lot of times when we think of self-sustainability, it's about, you know, growing a garden or maybe raising livestock or chickens for eggs or meat and, and that kind of thing. But there's a lot of other things that you can do, even from a gardening aspect, such as growing things like cotton and flax or loofah, you know, things that can be used for other types of self-sustainability for making your own clothes and um, wash things like a loofah or, uh, you know, flax to make linen and that kind of thing. So these are different things that we've been trying and learning how to do. And as you build up these skill sets, you know, then you can be more self-sustainable just outside of like canning tomatoes. But that's it for today. Appreciate you guys coming by and uh, hanging out with us again today. It's been a while, it's been a month since I've done a full length video. Uh, so I'm trying to get back into catching up with things. Weather hasn't been quite cooperative recently and it's getting to be fall winter time where there's not as much going on from a gardening sense and now we're kind of getting more into the hibernating time for us <clears throat> but that's uh, our last step of what we're doing with cotton and uh, I hope whatever's going on in your neck of the woods that you are having a fantastic time and if you are in the US um, and celebrate Thanksgiving tomorrow's Thanksgiving for us uh, so I hope that you have a happy holiday season and um, whatever you're doing your greenhouses, gardens, homesteads, whatever it is, I hope it's working out great for you and that you're trying some new stuff and learning some new skills. But we will see you again soon. Subscribe if you haven't done so already. And also keep a lookout. I'll probably post something here either on our Facebook page or on the YouTube community tab uh, when we've got our cotton seeds for sale if you're interested in picking up a few cotton seeds uh, and just trying it out for yourself. Have a great day. Namaste. Thank you.